that trailed us out of her draws, Joe. Well, I, I can wash up anytime. Joe, you got time for that later. Come on. Remove your filthy hands from my person. Oh, oh, oh. And receive your actual You varlet! <laughs> you know, that wasn't very nice. You call me a varlet. I don't know what a varlet is. It's one of them, one of them English sissies that goes around dressing up the counts and them dukes and such. That's a valet. Huh? Valet to you. Oh, yeah. Well, far left's probably something even worse. Sir? I demand satisfaction. Do what? You have humiliated me in front of all these witnesses. I shall not rest until I obtain full satisfaction. He means he wants to fight a duel. Ha, 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 you must be joshing. You, you ain't even got a gun. As the insulted party, I have the choice of weapons. I choose swords. Oh, I wouldn't even know how to handle one of them things. I shall teach you, mon ami. After which it shall give me the greatest of pleasure to kill you. against you at all. Not a thing in the world, mind you. It's just... Well, it's him. Hey, Jim, what's the matter? What's the matter? Well, you boys have been out of town, but let me tell you, this flea-bitten little Frenchman is the worst pest that ever if came... If I am bitten by fleas, monsieur, it is only because the beds in your pigsty are full of them. Apologize. Uh. Never... Uh, and she talked pretty awesome. Yeah, she sure does. Yeah. Well, boys, this varmint's been thrown out of every hotel and boarding house in this town. Ever since he got here, he's been writing them poems. Poems? Well, that's what he calls them. He prints them, then he, he posts them up on walls and, and hitching racks, and he... And... Here, look here, horse. Look. Shun like the plague by all you hold dear this pest hole which calls itself the palace. <laughs> Better far to perish to cross the desert alone. This barn is not fit for man nor coach on. Butcher. Better to spend the time killing the roaches in your plague-ridden bistro than murdering my rhymes. The word is pronounced cochon. What's that? Oh, that that's French, us. Uh, probably means coachman, you know, like Charlie Jones oh, at oh, the stage. Yeah. Permit me to correct you, monsieur. The word signifies pig or hog. But when I say that this barn is not fit for even them, I am insulting the whole family of pigs. Hoss, I thought you were my friend. Oh, Jim, I am. It just struck me funny, that's all. Funny. Oh, François, what are we to do? I will think of something. Come on, Joe. Let's go get a beer. Do not worry, your little head, sister. Oh, Excuse me, did, did you say the little lady was your sister? Mais certainement. It's plain to see she's not my brother. It's a good unknown you, Joe. 
It would have been a distinct pleasure to kill you, monsieur. But since my sister and I can find no shelter in this barbaric village, we are compelled to take the next coach to San Francisco. Yeah, my brother and I just brought some cattle up to the high country. That road's been closed by a landslide. At least a week for a stage can get through there. Oh, Francois! Oh. Well, look, miss, since, uh, since you have no place to stay here in town, I wonder if you might not accept my invitation to put up with us out at the Ponderosa. That's our ranch. Hey, Joe, don't you think we ought to talk to Paul about it first? Well, what do you mean, talk to Pa? I mean, this is exactly what Pa would want us to do. Charlie doesn't want some strangers leaving our little town with a low opinion of our hospitality. Hospitality? Joe, do you hear that? That little fellow wants to kill me. Oui, monsieur. I shall be delighted to accept, monsieur. You are so very kind, monsieur. How can I ever repay you? admit this comes as somewhat of a surprise, but of course you are most welcome, both of you. I'm sorry I didn't quite catch the name. For a good reason, monsieur, no one has mentioned it. It is Villon, Francois Villon, my sister, Eloise. Did you say Francois Villon? The same. Well, I must say, you haven't aged very much. Hey, you two fellows know each other? Now, Francois Villon is one of the greatest poets in French literature. I'm delighted to find someone in this wilderness with even the slightest particle of learning. Are you by some chance a descendant of the great poet? I shall be happy to explain, monsieur. You see, Francois... Oh, Francois, je suis très fatigué. Oh, ma pauvre belle, she's tired. Perhaps I can explain another time. Oh, well, of course, please forgive our thoughtlessness, uh, mademoiselle. Uh, horse, would you take the back, Jen? Uh, permit me to... Merci, monsieur. Oh, don't forget to get all the things. Eh? Monsieur Horse, do not forget my salt case. One of them is reserved especially for you. What does that mean? Oh, I neglected to tell you how stupid of me. It is a painful necessity, but uh, I fear there's no way it can be avoided. I must obtain satisfaction from your son. Monsieur? Monsieur? Satisfaction? From horse? Écoutez bien, monsieur. To make the omelette light and fluffy, instead of heavy and greasy as these eggs were, you beat the whites and the yellows separately. Add a touch of basil, the various soupçons of parsley, and uh, perfection, voila, Mr. Cartwright. Hopsing, Mr. Villon and his sister are our guests. Now, they'll be staying with us until the stage can get through to San Francisco. Until then, we shall try in our poor and humble way to make things as comfortable as possible for them. Okay. He stay here. He come in kitchen. What up? All right, Hopsing. <laughs> Shall we uh, adjourn to the living room? He has a temperament, that one. Yes. Hopsing's been in our employ a long time. His cooking suits us just fine. Pourquoi no? It's a country of barbarians. Excuse sans me. taste, sans delicacy. Francois, no! Oh, don't worry, Eloise. We don't take what he says too seriously. But he takes himself, how do you say, très seriously. That is the big trouble. Ça, Sophia, trop de parler. Je t'en prie. Come on, come on. Let's not have an argument, all right? Vous êtes très gentil, monsieur. Oui, il est très gentil, le pauvre garçon. Qu'est-ce que voulez-vous? Rien, rien. No, no, look, uh, look, I got a great idea. Why don't I take you outside and show you some of the ranch? It's really very beautiful. As a matter of fact, I'd like to show you the lake. Le lac? Oui, le lac. Now, yeah, what about it? Je serai enchanté, monsieur. Hmm? Hmm. Oh. Au revoir, François. Au revoir. Forgive my frankness, gentlemen, but how can you tolerate these furnishings? Not a trace, not a single touch of elegance. Oh, I got chores to do. I'll see you all at trois. Yeah. Ah, but here is something else. Exquisite. Well, wow. thank you. I'm glad you like them. Yes, I do, monsieur, very much. Thank you again. Those are uh, portraits of my wives. Your wives, monsieur? Yes, my, uh, my late wives. All three of them? Monsieur is a veritable bluebeard. However did you manage it? 
The workmanship, monsieur, is superb. Uh, the frames, they are of gold, no? The frames, they are of gold, yes. Now, what has that got to do with my... Be easy, easy, Pa. Uh, Monsieur Villon, that's not the matter which we wish to discuss. If you would honor us by sitting down. What service? We would like to hear that um, explanation that you promised us earlier. About my name? Oh, yes. With your permission. We're waiting. Yeah. You are perhaps familiar with the theory of reincarnation? I've read about it. Then you will understand when I tell you that I am the living reincarnation of François Villon. No, 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 monsieur. Do not look down your nose at me. I, too, was skeptical at first. Now, you don't expect me to believe that... To give an instance. One day I reflected on the beauty of ladies how quickly it fades. And I asked myself, where are the snows of yesteryear? Precisement. Imagine my surprise to learn that the same words had been written four centuries earlier by a poet named François Villon. Now, what's so surprising about that? You probably heard the line somewhere before and it's stuck in your mind. Impossible, monsieur. My parents were ignorant peasants. I was what you call self-educated. But until that time, I had never read Villon. Proving what? Allow me, monsieur. Villon was born in 1431 at the time of the harvest. I was born in the year 1831 at the time of the harvest, exactly 400 years later. Another coincidence. It's much more than a mere coincidence. Everything that Villon had done, I found that I had done or was about to do. Uh, allow me to uh, remind you, Monsieur Villon, that uh, the great poet Villon was also a rogue and a rascal. And what does Monsieur mistake me for? An honest man. Well, what do you want us to mistake you for, a thief? I prefer to say that uh, I am above petty bourgeois moralité. Villon killed a man and was condemned to be hanged. Exactly the same shall happen to me. One cannot change one's nature nor one's destiny. It is written in the stars. All right. All right. Now let's, for argument's sake, assume that you are sincere about being this Francois Villon brought back to life. Now, that does not concern me. However, what does concern me is my son, Hoss. And I am hoping that when you demand this so-called satisfaction of yours, that you are not thinking of some such ridiculous idea as a duel. Mais précisément. What did Horst do to him? Do? Do, monsieur? D'abord, je n'ai pas l'habitude de prendre un bain devant tout le monde avec mes vêtements à 8 heures le matin dans le centre de la rue. What did he say? Uh, something about taking a public bath in the middle of the street. Mr. Villon. You have reached the end of my patience. Now, I advise you to get this silly idea of a duel out of your head, or I shall have to ask you to get out of this house. And if you do, monsieur, you will simply be speeding your son's tragic denouement. You must understand, it is fate. Kismet. Okay. Don't, don't take him seriously, Pa. He's, um... Just an actor playing Don't a part. Seriously, he's just an actor playing a part. Did you hear what he said? He's going to duel with horse. Well, just because he says he's a duelist doesn't make him a duelist. No more than saying that he's Vion makes him Vion. When you come right down to it, he probably can't even handle a sword at all. Try it again, huh? Hey, look, will you learn to stand sideways? You're too big a target this way. Oh, come on, Joe. I'm too big a target any way you look at it. Hey, now, look, this isn't a fist fight. You better get that through your thick skull. All right, look, let's start from scratch. If you hadn't said that, that makes me nervous. You'll be lucky if a scratch is all you get. All right, ready? The salute. Feels a dead gum silly. 
On guard. No, no. No horse. Try to imitate Joe. Oh, animal and Joe, it looks good. I ain't, I ain't got the figure for it. See here? <clears throat> well, don't worry about your looks. Just keep your side turned towards him, watch the sword point. <clears throat> side to him, point the sword. Hey, Joe, you're cute, ain't he, Adam? Forget the jokes. That's your enemy. Attack! Joe! Oh, dead gummit. Well, what's the use, Adam? He's not gonna take it seriously. Well, it is kind of hard to keep a straight face dancing around out here on these hills with silly-looking toothpicks. Hoss? I want you to think. Concentrate. Now, these toothpicks, as you call them, are larger than bullets, right? Yep. Now, if a bullet passes through you, you're liable to kick the bucket, aren't you? Sure. Anybody knows that. All right, now, if this toothpick, which is larger than a bullet, were to pass through a man exactly the same way, it could do an equal or greater amount of harm, right? Yeah, right. Especially if the man who's aiming it at you were standing less than five feet away and knew exactly where to puncture you so it'd do the most damage. It's like getting shot at close range, wouldn't you say? Yeah, well... What are we doing standing around here? Come on here, Joe, and help me practice. Now, show me that thing where you do this. Say calm. Say calm. All right. You want me to lunge? Right. All right. You ready? Ready. I don't want to hurt you. No. You ready? Yeah. Hey, that's good. Yeah, come on. Now, let me try it. All right. Yeah. Lunge at you. Yeah, you want to lunge. Yeah, okay. It's not bad. Little, little easy. No, 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 no. C'est abominable, monsieur. The fault is yours, you see. You uh, must attack uh, uh, with more esprit. Uh, Elon, you see, he does not comprehend the seriousness. He, uh, he is not on the qui vive. What would you like me to do? Stab him a few times to get his attention? Pourquoi non? You see, the lunge, it must be real. It must be deadly. Many have been killed while practicing pour le sport. Only so can one learn the essentials. Hey, wait, wait a minute. You mean I gotta get killed before I can get to be a good dueler? I will demonstrate. Your weapon, s'il vous plaît. Now, for the seriousness. Attack in earnest. Insult the opponent. Chien. Gros cochon. Hey, I know what that means. En Monsieur, I hope you've learned something. I'll talk to his sister tonight and see if she can get him to call this thing off. Yeah, that may be our only solution. At least we'll have a full moon for it. Yeah, listen, little brother, you talk real good, you hear? Don't you let that moon get your mind off what's important. <sighs> now, Louise, you look beautiful in all this moonlight. You talk so pretty, monsieur. I could listen to you talk all night. Talk? Oh, you know, that reminds me. Uh, there was something I wanted to talk to you about. Why don't we go over there and sit down? 
talk to you about my brother Hoss. I was wondering if you could speak to your brother and maybe talk him out of fighting that silly duel. Oh, I already have. I tried everything. It's impossible to reason with him. He is a man, how do you say, a man possessed of the devil, the devil of François Avillon. Oh, come on, you really don't believe that, do you? <laughs> of course not. But he does, and that is important. You see, he thinks he is my protector. But in truth, I must be with him always to protect him from himself. Well, it isn't very fair to you. It doesn't give you a chance to live your own life. No. But I dream of it sometimes. It's only a dream. It's very beautiful here. Mm -hmm, it sure is. La Lune. Yeah, the moon. And the lark. And the lake. Uh, I'm sorry I don't speak your language better. I'm not as learned as my brother. Well, maybe I could teach you a few words. Kiss. In French, we see. Baisé. Like this. Qui est C'est moi, François. I did not hear you come in last night, my sister. Oh, perhaps you fell asleep early. No, I was up late. I was occupied in writing verses. Oh, it was a beautiful night. We walked. Yes, of course. He's, uh, he's handsome, this little Joe. N'est-ce pas? Oh, oui. Très beau. Oh, what are you all dressed up for? Where are you going? Virginia City. Monsieur Cartwright has graciously provided me with a horse. Pourquoi? Well, soon the road will be clear and we must take the stagecoach. To do this, we must have money to pay for the fare. But we have money. No, little sister. You use the wrong tense. In English, the expression is we had. Oh, je ne comprends pas. In this country of barbarisms, there is one more barbaric than all the rest. A game called poker. It has not the delicacy, the finesse of Baccarat or Chemin de Fer. You have lost our money. Only a small sum remains. And now you go to gamble again? You're going to lose everything. No, little sister. Now I do not gamble. Now I have other plans. Oh, please, Francois. Each time you have the plan, there is more trouble. I beg you do not go. Little sister. I would not cause you one moment of unhappiness, but there are some things I must do. It is fate which decides. Au revoir, ma chère. Oh, Francois, no! What am I going to do here without you? Joe, you teach me so much. Yeah, I, uh, see, I, I, I wanted to talk to you about my, my brother. Mm. I, you know, I, well, 
I really, I really should talk, talk to you about that. Mm. You, you don't want to talk about my brother. Don't you think we've had enough of the talk? That's why I should have been back by now. Well, all I had to do was buy the tickets for the stage to San Francisco. Don't tell me you're worried about it. Worried? I... Well, I... I suppose I am worried about him in a way. Well, I admit he gets me riled up at times, but... Well, you can't take him seriously. He's like a little child. Well, you have another child to worry about. A big one. Oh, I can't believe he's serious about wanting to fight us. Can't you? Well, let me remind you that his idol once boasted of killing a man with a sword. Feels he must imitate him, live his life all over for him. Well, that's just a lot of talk. Little boys talk. Well, it sounds like your little boy might be returning. Good evening, Ben. Oh, Roy, come on, come on in, come on Hi, in. Thanks. Howdy, Adam. Roy? Well, what brings you out to the Ponderosa this time of night? Now, don't tell me that you brought me a warrant. No, it ain't a warrant, man. It's, it's this Frenchman you got visiting you here. What? Well, he's wrote himself another poem. Oh, is that all? No, <laughs> that's not out. all. Now, he, he went to Les Tanton's printing shop and paid him to make a whole lot of copies of it. Oh, well, I, I gave him that hey, money. Roy, uh, what, what does the poem say? I'm coming to that, Adam. Ben, it's all about you. Oh, yeah? Yeah, about how you come out west here without a nickel in your jeans. Yeah. Marrying a woman. Yeah. And then killing her so she could get her land. What? And then you married a second one, got rid of her, and a third? Now, hold on there. And that's what your friend says is the way you come by all the sacreds. It's now called the Ponderosa. Well, uh, well, that's preposterous. I know it, Ben, and you know it, but there's a lot of people coming into town every day that don't know it. Now, a thing like this could get us into with a whole pack of trouble. Pack of trouble, trouble, you don't know the half of it. Ah, bonsoir, monsieur. Bonsoir. Oh, bonsoir, you. Thinking Frenchman. Now, uh, take it easy, Pa, take it easy. Remember what you said, he's... Uh... Just a little boy, he's not responsible for what he does. Now, when I want your advice, I'll ask for it. Ben, you get hold of yourself now. If you want this man locked up for libel, I'll take him into town right now. But I'm not going to stand for any violence, you understand? Violence? Sheriff, sure, there's one thing I will promise you, there won't be any killing. Now, I'll admit that he gave you plenty of cause to get mad, but after all, he didn't commit any real crime. Crime? Right? What do you call that farm? Ben, it's not the same as horse stealing, now, is it? I'm going to get back into town and pull them things down. So, I lend you my horse to go to town. I feed you, I house you and your sister, I put up with your bad manners, I even put up with your threats to kill my son, and this is how you repay my hospitality. I perceive you already have knowledge of my humble offering, which is highly regrettable. I wished very much to surprise you. What purpose did you have in writing this? Purpose? Well, even your idol, Francois Villon, did not write without a reason whether it be to please some lord, or to obtain a pardon, or even to make money. Mais naturellement, I too, write for money. But, Monsieur Adam, to be frank with you, it was my intention, when I wrote this poem, to sell all the copies to your father. Black man, huh? <sighs> Call it what you choose, Monsieur. Let's not quibble. I'm an artist. An artist? You're a scoundrel without an ounce of gratitude or talent. No talent. You can say this to me after you read my poem. I didn't have to read your poem. The sheriff told me all about it. Alors, you take the word of an illiterate uh, peasant. You are afraid to hear what I have written. Monsieur Adam, would you do me the honor? 
It's your funeral. Ballad in honor of my gracious host, the Lord of the Ponderosa. France had her Gilles Dorette, Italy her Cagliostro. Cleopatra trained vipers as her pets, and the Borgia's banquet saw hundreds fall. But the Lord of the Ponderosa is master of them all. Bluebeard had a surplus of wives. Henry VIII had far too many lovely ladies, all who laid down their lives, and others there were who heeded the butcher's call. But the Lord of the Ponderosa is master of them all. Infamous Pharaoh. All right. That's enough. I've heard enough. Well, you know, Pa, when you considered it simply as poetry, it really isn't too bad. Too bad. I told you all that reading would affect your mind. All right, Mr. Vino, it's time for some plain speaking. I've let you stay here this long only on account of your sister. But sister or no sister, you get out of here tonight, both of you. Now, uh, Pa, you can't do that. Oh. Well, I'm sorry, mademoiselle. Pa, you promised both of them that they could stay. I don't know what Francois has done to make you so mad, but whatever it is, you shouldn't let him rile you. After all, Pa, he's just like a little child. Now, you stay out of this. Yes, sir. Excuse me, mademoiselle. I, I do not wish to expose you to this unpleasant scene. We will pack at once, monsieur. My brother and I thank you very much for all your kindness. Now, well, well, wait a minute. Wait. Wait a minute. I... Well, little Joe's right. I, I did make that promise. Uh, you and your brother can stay here until that trail is cleared. No, it would be imposing too much. Oh, well, my dear, as far as you're concerned, it's no imposition at all. We accept. To leave now would be most inconvenient. I have some unfinished business. Now, look, if you're still thinking about that stupid duel of yours... Monsieur Cartwright, you have proven that you are a man of your word. I am a man of my word. Your son's insult can only be wiped out with blood. What's everybody uh, down the mouth about? Au contraire, monsieur. I am, as you say, very much up in the mouth. Bonsoir, monsieur. Eloise. Look like you've been to a funeral or something. Adam, horse, little Joe. Your mother's pictures, they're gone. What? Yeah. Hey, Paul. Hmm? You hear? I, I thought you took the team in. Team? Yeah, you too. Who took them in? I'll give you one guess. Got up early and came down. Thought I'd go. Oh, he's not gone. Should have known. Well, we won't have any trouble trailing them. But trailing who? All right, boys, let's get started. <laughs> Do not be sad, little sister. In the great metropolis of San Francisco, you will meet gentlemen of culture and refinement. And you will soon forget this, this little Joe. I will never forget little Joe. That is what you say now. But where are the snows of yesteryear? I have only left for the sake of his brother, and for you too, to keep you from trouble. Trouble? What have I got to do with trouble? It is for peasants. Beat! Beat, my beauties! Ah, San Francisco. That way. Sara! I took 
the road to San Francisco, all right. Uh, that fool didn't he think we'd cut him off? You ever stop to think that maybe they wanted us to catch him? I told you all that reading could affect your mind. Yeah, I, I just been figuring, Paul. What, what are we chasing him for anyhow? Well, some family I raised. Come on, let's cut across the Arroyo and catch up with him. <laughs> Gentlemen, what a happy surprise. Not in my wildest dreams did I hope to see you again so soon. I bet you didn't. Not in your wildest dreams. Little Joe, I can explain everything. Now, I... hold on, ma'am. You just wait just one minute here. Now, where are they? They? Yes, they. stay at the Ponderosa was so pleasant. I felt sure you would not object if we took back with us some small memento, a souvenir. How could you do this thing? It was not very difficult. Well, you're just lucky there are no scratches on them. Otherwise, I might have to take the law into my own hands. The law, monsieur? Yes, the law. It might come as a shock to you to find out, sir, that... Horse stealing is punishable by hanging in this part of the country. The horses? But, Francois, you told me that... Pa, you couldn't hang a man just for barring a couple of horses. Yeah, uh, horses right, Pa. I mean, that's, that's carrying a little bit too far. I'm afraid that decision is not up to us. You see, Pa made a solemn promise to Sheriff Coffey that he wouldn't turn him in unless he committed a real crime, and I'm... Uh, looks like this is it. Yeah, well, now, wait a minute, Adam. Oh, uh, Adam is right, boys. I, uh... I guess I did make that promise. You can't take a man in to be hanged. That's up to Sheriff Coffey. No Cartwright has ever set himself above the law. But Adam... Uh, no buts, boys. I... I gave my word. No. No. The great Francois Villon was also condemned to be hanged. Do you still continue to doubt, monsieur? Perhaps now you will agree that it is possible for a man to be inhabited by a spirit of one that has lived many years before. Perhaps. No. No, it's not true. Don't weep, little sister. One cannot escape one's destiny. It is fate. Kiss me. It's always hardest on women. Well, you know, it isn't exactly easy on you. On me, monsieur? What is life? A straw in the wind. We all must die sometime. But it is not given to all to live on forever in men's minds and hearts. That's right, sure ain't. I have spent all of last night composing a poem. It is a masterpiece. It is my last testament to my brothers. Just as Francois Villon wrote his 400 years before. Hey, is this great masterpiece uh, important enough to compensate for your death? Oh, bien sûr. A thousand times over. It teaches love, mercy, understanding. Monsieur has not lied to me. I will be permitted to read my poem in public. Oh, yes, yes, yes. Uh, right before you hang. It is all I ask. The scaffold they are building, it is in the public square. Right in the heart of town. Under the uh, carpenter spent all night working on it. It's almost finished. I measured the cadence of my poem to the beat of his hammer. If you like, I will read it to you. Perhaps you make some suggestions. Oh, no, no, no. I, I wouldn't dare presume. I'll read it anyway. The last will and testament of Francois Villon written on the occasion of his execution in Virginia City on Friday, the 17th of October, in the year of our Lord, 1860. Brothers who draw the breath of life when I am dead, 
Harden not your hearts against my dying call. Let no man mock me, nor my sad estate, but pray to the Lord that he spare us all. Brothers, though my feet dance lightly on the wind, though they kick to the sound of a silent song, remember this, ere you condemn my sin, it is not given to everyone to know right from wrong. Thank the stars that you do not share my fall. Let no man mock me, nor my sad estate, but pray to the Lord that he spare us all. That burns, that wasn't, a, wasn't the prettiest thing I ever heard. Just to think, I, I dang near killed you. I forgive you, monsieur, with all my heart. But one correction, it is I who would have killed you. Francois, you must forgive me for saying you had no talent. Adam? Well, it's too bad you've got to die to prove it. That's the whole point, monsieur. I part with life in order that my words may live. One thing worries me, though. What's that, monsieur? I, I made a mistake? My English is no good? No, no, I, I was thinking about your sister. You frightened me for a moment, monsieur. I don't... My sister? You think I have given her no thought? Well... You think I have not noticed how things stand between her and little Joe? Little Joe? After I'm removed from the scene, she and little Joe can be married. Married? That's why I don't know how to tell you this things being the way they are. I'd like to see you die happy. But you might as well know the truth. Little Joe is not the marrying kind. What? Even if he were, he's too young. Pa would never permit it. He... Uh, Horst, you got anything to add? I? Oh, yeah, uh... Well, seeing as how our only brother was... what well, was hung for horse stealing, we couldn't have that in the family. No, people would talk. You mean he's been leading her on? He's a scoundrel? A roué? I challenge him to a duel! Hey, hey, wait a minute. Ain't you forgetting something? You have a date with the hangman first. But my sister Eloise can hardly speak the language. She's helpless without me. She's all alone. Well, she wouldn't be alone for long. What do you mean? Well, there are lots of dance halls that need hostesses. Men get tired of looking at the same old faces. My sister, a dance hall girl? Doesn't matter that she doesn't speak English too well. Why, some of the men might like her even better for it. First thing you know, they'd all be calling her Frenchie. Chien. Chien, push on! Hey, wait a minute. You don't want to hang for murder, too, do you? I cannot hang. I must provide for my sister. Oh, under the circumstances, I'd say that's a bit difficult. Yeah, dang near impossible. But you must do something. You must help me. Eloise. Well, even if we could help you, what difference would it make? You can't escape your destiny. Sooner or later, your sister would end up in the same boat. No, no, no. I would take care of her. I would never leave her this way. Do you really mean that? Of course I mean it. What do you think I am? Uh... Un cochon! Hank! Hank! Hank, you can stop that hammer now. This scaffold, she's finished, yes? It was never started. Okay, Sheriff! Sheriff, I think maybe you'd better tell him he's free. I don't think he'll believe me. Pardon? Well, you see, Francois, uh, we, we promised the Sheriff that we'd... Uh, we bring you in if you committed a crime, but uh, we didn't promise them that we'd press charges. And if we don't press them, there isn't anything anybody can do to you. Yeah. Is this true? Yeah. And you? You kept me here? Cochon! Why didn't you not tell me they didn't press the charges? Because you did not ask me. <laughs> Shall we get back in the game? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Ah, oh, Francois, don't feel too badly about not getting hanged. At least you got a chance to write your epic poem. It was you! Now you were the one... Ah, don't jump to any conclusions. Oh, 
only a man who loves poetry could have the imagination for such a plan. I shall be in your debt for always. <laughs> well, maybe it was kind of a dirty trick, but uh, I hope you learned something of a lesson. A lesson? What greater lesson can a man have than to be saved from the hangman? And just think, mes amis, how few are fortunate enough to profit by the experience. C'est bon. <clears throat> Don't you forget now, I'm going to write to you every single day. Et moi, chef. It will help me let you do talk, see English. Talk? Now, is that all you ever want to do is talk? <laughs> oh, Merci mille fois for your hospitality. For the cash you've been generous enough to lend me. And above all, for the lesson. I hope it sticks. Oh, mais certainement. Bonjour. Touché. En gare. Uh, you Cartwrights, <laughs> you taught me what I must do. First, I must find a rich husband for my sister in San Francisco. And then I shall be free. Free to be hanged. Au revoir, mes amis. Au revoir. Au revoir. Do you hear what he said, Bo? Yep. You know, I have an idea that one day he'll succeed. <laughs> it is fate. He's met. <laughs> <laughs>